Reddit, what is a wholesome, solitary activity that a person can do to help forget how awful and poor their current life is? I've always loved devoting some of my Saturdays to city exploration. Wake up, pocket some cash, and walk in a random direction without a plan. Follow your instincts. If a street looks interesting, take a turn and walk down it. See a weird shop, look inside. My one rule, don't backtrack. Keep going until it's dark or you're too tired. Then find a route home or take an Uber if you can afford it. It's easy, rewarding, and great exercise. You'd have no idea how many hidden gems I've found around my city. Be it alleyway coffee shops or vintage record stores. Try it. And I 100% guarantee you'll love your city again. A lot of people are scared of doing this but going to movies by yourself is a great activity to do. You don't have to worry about arranging plans with someone else. Plus, it's not like you are going to interact with the person you are going to the movies with unless you are an asshole. Learn to cook or bake something new. If you can't cook, learn the basics. If you can, try something advanced. It will be challenging for your brain and you'll have food at the end of it. Win-win. Set a timer for 5 minutes and clean as much as you can. Becomes a fun game. Repeat daily. Jigsaw puzzle. I paint pictures of Redditor's pets that have passed away. And then I send them the paintings. Going for a long walk at a moderate pace. Sometimes it's good to think about nothing but keeping a decent pace. Just get into a rhythm. You go into a zone that is hard to get into with all the distractions at work, home etc. and it's very therapeutic doodling, then coloring it in. It's completely focusing but mindless for me. The feel of a pencil or pen across paper is very soothing to me. Thanks for the silver. Public library. If you're in a large enough city check out all of the different ones and find a favorite. Find some podcasts you like and go for a walk or do housework. Start a workout routine or just pick up running. Running feels silly at first but you'll get over it quickly. I enjoy reading. Getting lost in a good book can be incredibly therapeutic. It's also basically free with a library card. Playing an instrument. Pick an instrument you think you'd most like to play guitar, keyboard, drums, bass, violin, etc. and get one and start practicing. Watch YouTube videos on how to practice and get better. Cross stitching. It sounds like an old lady hobby but it's both creative and methodical. I like to put on a podcast or a video without a ton of visuals. And just stitch for hours. You can get patterns online. DMC thread is only like 60 cents a skein. And the rest of the materials aren't too expensive either at your local craft store. It gives you something to focus on. And the finished product makes you proud of what you've done. It seems condescending. But adult coloring books. It can be therapeutic to throw on some music, background noise, or maybe you enjoy the silence and just color. Sing, not for others to hear, but for yourself. There is something about singing your favorite songs that calms the mind. If it gives you even just a little more energy to face the day ahead, then it succeeds. I started thrifting to keep my mind busy, sorting through clothes and learning about them and the quality. I'm still learning but have had fun buying and flipping some stuff along the way. And it's a bit self-sustaining in that way which makes it even better. I hope you start feeling better soon. Reading. I feed crows. I buy unsalted peanuts in the shell and toss them as I walk my dogs or wait for the bus. I have about four murders now who recognize me. Plus random crows at different locations. The ones by the lake feed from my hand and almost let me touch them. After about a year of doing it, I got my first gift a few weeks ago. It was a walnut shell. Low, no salt treats. Low phosphorus cat kibble is apparently a nice well-rounded snack. Fruits and veggies but not apples. Fish is good, too, but impractical. Basically use your common sense. Crows like flat feeders. So like a screen with a frame set horizontally, lightly lifted off the ground. If you want to keep squirrels or other things away, apparently cayenne pepper is good for this. Birds don't have the receptors for capsaicin the thing that makes peppers hot, which is why birds are the main planters of peppers. Oils and grease can get in animals' fur and feathers and cause trouble. Toss the treat toward them. Watch out of the corner of your eye. Don't stare. They'll be cautious at first and it takes a lot of patience. 
gradually they should start to trust you and come closer. Having a set schedule helps. 2. Buy cheap vegetables. Make soup very slowly and thoroughly. Chop everything up into little pieces and just focus intently on every slice. Breathe in the fresh veggie aroma. The smell of browning onions. The smell of broth. Listen to the simmery bubbly sounds and stir gently every now and then. Make yourself a cup of hot tea or a glass of wine while you wait for the flavors to blend and the broth to thicken up. Pretend you are a sweet old grandma. When the soup is ready, get some crackers and pour some in a nice heavy bowl. Pretend you are the beloved little boy or girl eating soup made by your sweet old grandma. Pretend it's like the soup from Zelda, healing you a little with every sip. Slow down and take in the wholesomeness of a home-cooked meal prepared with care. Care for yourself and receive that care. Volunteer to help others. I know it doesn't sound solitary, but it is. I turn up my music and dance around my house like a bloody fool, often with my cat in my arms. You'll have to ask him how he feels about that. Shrimp keeping. As in, keeping freshwater shrimp in an aquarium. You can go get a cheap, plastic, 3 to 5 gallon aquarium from Amazon. Put in a small sponge filter with a pump. Pick out some decor plants. And buy some neocaridina shrimp. They are small, easy to care for only really require topping off their water and maybe an algae wafer once every few weeks, and you get to watch them jump and swim all over the tank. Even better, you'll get to watch the females carry around and then hatch little baby shrimp to add to your colony. You could get like a 3 to 5 gallon tank with a cool color changing LED light and keep it next to your bed so you can watch it when you're really stressed out. 2. Hiking is perfect for that. Get away from technology and embrace nature for a while. World building. Whenever I have nothing to do, no technology or books, I build a world with my mind. My imagination is the limit. People ask me why do I never get bored? How can I when we're gifted with a mind capable of conjuring so many beautiful things on its own? I create stories of people in my world. I use the arcs of my main characters as a timeline of my own experiences in real life. I can make their life as beautiful or as ugly as I want it to be. In my mind, I can play God. Go for a hike on a local nature park trail. Pack a lunch. Take some pictures of nature and just enjoy the solitude of it all. Spending time with yourself, in nature, as opposed to on your couch, is oddly different and satisfying. I've been talking about this kind of thing with my therapist. So basically there are actions called away actions that people use to forget negative aspects of their life. For some people this is drinking, gambling or whatever. In my situation I do things that I can focus on so I'm not alone with my bad thoughts. So video games that are focus heavy, or shows that require you to pay attention. My therapist suggests that I do more towards actions. Actions that are in service of things that I truly value in life. Let's say one of my values is being creative. So instead of binging the entirety of a video game story to forget that thing X isn't going my way and it makes me feel bad, I can acknowledge how I'm feeling, think if what I want to do is in service of one of my life values, goals, and if it's not then I can seek out something that is in service of them. So for creativity I could start painting, or writing. He said often times when people fall back on those away actions they wind up back in the same place but feeling worse. I observe that a lot in myself in retrospect. So it might do you some good to find two or three things that truly matter to you and break them down into things or actions you can do in service of those values. I hope that helps. Go to somewhere beautiful and pleasant and find a cafe and take in your surroundings while having a coffee. That's what I do anyway. I hope you feel better soon x. Weightlifting. It helps release endorphins and builds muscle, which may be enough to help turn things around so your life won't be so awful. I once went to a flea market with two foldable chairs and a sign that says, a dollar for your story, spent about five dollars that day, because most of the people would just be happy for someone who listened. Now that I wrote it down, I think of doing that again as soon as it gets warmer. It was a very fulfilling experience for me. I like to go on a scavenger hunt by myself sometimes. I make a pretty ridiculous list and it's oddly specific. Like man who looks constipated and dog that refuses to walk so they make the owner carry them. It's something that gets me out of the house. Just walking around is fine too. But scavenger hunts are fun. Knitting. 
I've been suicidal for a good bit, but sometimes the key really is to look out for you in small ways. Like, if your brain wants to do something, chase that bit of passion. Hell, yesterday my brain simply wanted to dance and I was like sure, buddy, danced around the bathroom like I was Michael Jackson. Playing Stardew Valley. I look forward to doing my skincare routine before going to sleep, especially after a stressful or bad day. It only takes up 10 minutes of my time but I feel so refreshed and clean. To me, it's like a restart button. Add in some sleep and it's a whole new day. My therapist recommended me years ago picking something in your daily life that makes you happy, and letting it fill you with all the joy you can, unapologetically. I chose dogs and petting a pupper consistently makes me so happy it can change my entire mood. Letting yourself be happy without cutting yourself down is a skill that takes time, but unapologetic enjoyment never hurts. Origami. The paper is cheap but you can also use pretty much any kind of paper as long as it is cut into a symmetrical square. There are many tutorials online. I like YouTube so you can actually see it being done. And if you fold 1000 cranes you get a wish. There are free courses for Reiki, meditation and yoga online as well. Paint by number kits designed for adults. They are inexpensive. Come with all the supplies, and super rewarding even if you're not at all artistic. The good brands come out looking so nice you can even hang them up around your house like real paintings. Pop on a podcast or your favorite music and paint away. Sometimes I like to go and Google restaurants and bars in other countries. Look at their menus, and try to decide what I would get if I were there. It helps distract me for a while and who knows. Maybe one day I will actually be able to eat at one of those places. On my really bad days, I get a sense of accomplishment from brushing my teeth. Because on those really bad days, it is so hard to do. Plus I get terrifying nightmares of my teeth rotting out of my mouth if I don't brush twice a day. Fewer, terrifying nightmares. More, also terrifying nightmares. As a depressed person, I totally understand. Every day normal things become huge tasks. Just getting out of bed takes me over an hour sometimes BC of the lack of motivation. If you've brushed today, you did good. Hell anyone who is depressed AF and lived today, you did good.